Hello everyone, my name is Sarafi and I'm happy to meet you all. And today we're going to be continuing the Duel Links Prediction series with the Sky Striker archetype. Now for those of you who know a bit about Sky Strikers, you're probably thinking that there are some things that are coming to Duel Links that you're concerned about or that you're curious about. But for the people who don't know Sky Strikers, the people who are Duel Links only, they're probably sitting here looking at everyone else going, um, so what's the big deal about Sky Strikers? There's only two monsters. What, what is Toss? What is, what is all this nonsense people are talking about? Why does the lack of main phase two have so much to do with whether Sky Strikers are good or not? So this video is for you guys. If you don't know anything about Sky Strikers, I'm here to help you out. So Sky Strikers are coming and the skill is very confusing because it says that it's just going to add four types of Sky Striker monsters to your extra deck and doesn't tell you what those are. So let's go over that real quick. First I'm going to go over the cards that we're getting, that we know we're getting, and then I'm going to go over the cards that we could get later. First of all we have Sky Striker Ace Ray. This is a level 4 Dark Warrior monster with 1500 attack and 1500 defense. As a quick effect, you can tribute this card, Special Summon 1 Sky Striker Ace Monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. While this card is in your graveyard, if a face-up Sky Striker Ace Link monster you control is destroyed by battle, or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can Special Summon this card. You can only use each effect of Sky Striker Ace Ray once per turn. So, there are a couple of things to note about here. Number 1, Ray tributes herself to activate her effect. That makes her very difficult to deal with especially during your turn, because when she's no longer on the board, then you can't target her with cards like Forbidden Chalice or Effect Mailer. Even if you manage to negate her effect with something like Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, you're losing the benefit of destroying the monster, so it's a half victory in that situation. The other important thing to note is that this is not a Link Summon. You are special summoning a monster from your extra deck to your extra monster zone. Therefore, even though the card doesn't explicitly state that it can only be a Link 1 monster, a card like Sky Striker Ace Zeke, which says must be Link Summoned, is not an applicable target for Ray's effect. So Ray is the bread and butter of Sky Striker decks. She allows you to easily tag into her various Sky Striker Ace Link forms, and then if one of those leaves the field, she comes right back and assumes a different form. That is going to be very difficult for a lot of people to deal with, especially in a deck where we don't have a main phase two. So if you manage to knock Ray out of one of her suits and then she comes back and she assumes a different suit and she ends the battle phase, then your turn is over and it's back to everything else. So you'll have to be very careful when you're playing against this deck. Next up, the other card that's in the box is Sky Striker Ace Shizuku. This is a Link Machine monster that requires one non-water Sky Striker Ace monster. And that's very important to note. It does not say Sky Striker Monster, it says Sky Striker Ace Monster. So there are a lot of other Sky Striker Monsters in the deck, like Aileron and Hamp and Himmel, wherever he is. But those cards are not Sky Striker Ace Monsters. So the only monsters that can make these mechas are Ray and Rose and then the Link Monsters themselves. Monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense for each spell in your graveyard. Okay, that's a pretty good effect for Master Duel. In Duel Links, the effect will be pretty heavily reduced, but you'll still be able to put a few spells in your graveyard and then force your opponent to make some more careful decisions about how they want to battle. If you can get at least five spells in your graveyard, then this card will make it so that she can tie with a monster that has 2,000 attack points, which will, again, make it more difficult for your opponent to actually beat over her. But of course, once she's destroyed, the effect is no longer active, so she can't protect you from any direct attacks. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card was special summon this turn, you can add one Sky Striker spell from your deck to your hand with a name different from the cards in your graveyard. You can only special summon Sky Striker Ace Shizuku once per turn. So, this is a search, but it takes place during the end phase. The search effect is very, very strong, and therefore, Shizuku is the card that we're actually getting because she's the card that we're probably going to make the most of. You know, you, Kagari also has Recursion, but Kagari is a much better card than Shizuku. 
So it makes sense that they're not giving us Kigari quite yet. But Shizuku is a card that you will make. You will make probably every single turn, and you will be happy to continue searching and getting additional resources so you can make sure that when it's your turn again, you are able to make some good plays. All right. Now, the skill says that we're going to add four different types of Sky Striker Ace Link monsters that we don't already have. Shizuku, I believe, is going to be one of these. Even though it's in the box, I believe that Shizuku is one of the four non-dark, non-light Sky Striker Ace monsters that will just be added with the skill. And if you don't have a copy of Shizuku, the skill will provide it to you because it's necessary to play the deck. So if you're playing the deck with three rays and three Shizukus, you're only going to get three Sky Striker Ace monsters added to your extra deck, I think. We have Kigari. Kigari is the fire one. It requires a non-fire Sky Striker Ace monster. If this card is special summon, you can target one Sky Striker spell in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Gains 100 attack for each spell in your graveyard, and you can only special summon Sky Striker Ace Kigari once per turn. So this is a great card. It allows you to recur and get good benefits out of your spell cards. The fact that it triggers as an if effect when it is special summon, not when it is link summon, means that you can easily trigger this on your opponent's turn by using Ray to go into it. That's probably not the smartest use of Kigari, but it is an option. So if you are definitely in a situation where Kigari is going to be destroyed, you don't really have any better targets for Ray to link into, and you just want to make sure that you get an extra card for next turn, you can make Kigari on your opponent's turn, you will get a draw from your graveyard, and that will be better than nothing. Kigari, usually you can get her up to, you know, I mean, a decent amount of attack points. If you can get her up to like 2300, then that's pretty good. This is a card that you want to see three of. So the fact that we don't have her yet is a big detriment. But I don't think that Konami is going to hold back on this card for long. I do think that Kagari is going to come to the game as a UR, so Sky Strikers will be a very expensive deck. You should, you should expect that. This deck is going to be about as expensive as Heroes. Multiple URs across multiple boxes with not a lot of support other than those URs. And yet, if you invest in it, you will have a decent deck that you can fall in love with, you know, over the course of Duel Links to come. So, my chat has voted. I am a man of the people. I will simp. There will be Sky Striker content on my channel. You know, every time that they release new Sky Strikers, I'll buy new Sky Strikers and I'll update the deck and I'll let you guys know what, what it looks like. But for right now, we're just going to look at it. The other two Sky Striker Ace monsters are much less important than Kigari and Shizuku. One of them is Hayate, and my comments section will be spanned with comments about Hayate is actually the best one, uh, but ignore those people. Sky Striker Ace Hayate requires one non-wind Sky Striker Ace monster. You can only special summon Sky Striker Ace Hayate once per turn. This card can attack directly. After damage calculation, if this card battled, you can send one Sky Striker card from your deck to your graveyard. So, this is the combination. You summon Ray, you link into Hayate, Hayate attacks directly. Then you send a card from your deck to the graveyard and you link into Kagari. Kagari retrieves that card from your graveyard and then you link Kagari into Shizuku. And then during the end phase, Shizuku adds you another card. So in that sense, if you use all three monsters, you are able to basically draw two cards a turn. One of them you can use right away and one of them you can't. That's really, really strong, but it's not something you can do without a main phase two. So that's why people are saying Sky Striker is probably not going to be that good without a main phase two. But we only have one Hayate and one Kigari anyway. So it's not like this is a thing that you're going to do every single turn. Yes, Hayate is going to be a card that you want to use the effect on, but it's more likely with the 4,000 life point total that we're going to be using Hayate as our finisher. So I think that you're going to play Hayate when you are confident that you can win the game, probably by using your Widow Anchor, which we'll talk about next. So Hayate, good card. Don't sleep on this card. If this card comes in Duel Links, I imagine it will be an SR, not a UR and it will be a very good card, you should probably get it. Lastly, for the Link Monsters, we have Sky Striker Ace Kaina. This is the Earth one. If this card is special summon, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls. It can't attack until the end of your opponent's turn. Each time you activate a Sky Striker spell card or its effect, you gain 100 life points immediately after the card resolves. You can only special summon Kaina once per turn. Okay, so the first effect does not miss timing, and it triggers off of special summoning, not Link summoning. So, you... In most instances, if your Shizuku is removed from the field and your opponent has a board, you are going to summon Ray, and you will wait. You will wait until the battle phase. You will wait because they could just try and remove Ray. 
If they try and remove Ray, you can link into Kaina immediately, because then you're dodging removal. If they don't try and remove Ray, that's fine. You link into Kaina as soon as they enter the battle phase, then you can just target the monster that's the most threatening, and it can't attack for the rest of the turn. So this is how you can kind of dodge removal, make sure that you are able to survive your opponent's turn, even after your Shizuku has been destroyed. It's a great option. We're only going to have one Kaina. That is really rough for a 4,000 life point game. Sky Strikers are a deck that relies on controlling the opponent's actions. They are not able to very easily survive multiple turns unless they use the Kaina cycle. So I don't know what we're going to do. Really, Kaina is a card that we want to play more than one of. So if this card comes to the links, you definitely want to grab it as quickly as possible. All right, so those are the link monsters. That's kind of the game plan. Now let's talk about the spell cards and the ways that you can use them to try and stall out your opponent. One of the spell cards I think is the most important for Sky Strikers, we already have in the game. Sky Striker Maneuver Jamming Waves. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target one set spell or trap on the field and destroy it. Then if you have at least three spell cards in your graveyard, you can destroy one monster on the field without targeting. So, it's just MST, but it's a normal spell. Is that good? It's good enough. It's an easy way to get spells in your graveyard at the start of your turn. And if you can trigger the second effect, that's useful. So you want to have ways that you can easily throw spell cards out while still getting value out of them. Reinforcement the army is going to be your main one. Then of course you have Sky Striker, Mobilize, Engage. I think Jamming Waves is another card that you really want to play just as to make sure that you don't get disrupted because you really don't want to lose your ray. So this is a card I could probably see at one or two, and you'll probably be happy with that. It hasn't been reprinted, so it's from the Fortress of Gears box. If you have it, great. If you don't have it, oh well. But it probably will get reprinted at some point, I think. Then we have Eagle Booster, which is also in the game already. Quick play spell. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target one face-up monster on the field. That target is unaffected by card effects this turn, except its own, and if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard, it can't be destroyed by battle this turn. So, this card is getting reprinted. It's going to be in the box, and it's nice to have an option to make your monster unaffected by card effects, especially as a quick play spell, so you can respond to a card that you targeted or affected in some way. I think the Eagle Booster will probably be a card that you play over a card like, for example, Forbidden Lance. I think that most decks want to run Forbidden Lance right now. Eagle Booster is just your version of Forbidden Lance. It doesn't work on Ray, but you don't need it to work on Ray because Ray can tribute herself in response to any card targeting her. So this protects your linked monsters, which can't tribute themselves. And it's a good option. The ability to protect it from being destroyed in battle is also really nice. It means that you don't have to waste Ray's effect. Another card that's being added is Sky Striker Mecha Shark Cannon. This is a quick play spell. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, banish that monster, or if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard, you can special summon it to your field instead, but it cannot attack forever. That's good. It doesn't negate the monster's effect, so you can use the monster's effect all you want. And even if you don't have the special summon, it's DD Crow. Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. DD Crow sees play. DD Crow primarily sees play because you can use it during your opponent's first turn. You can't do that with Shark Cannon, but it has the added benefit of being a spell card, so I still think this is a card that you'll probably play at least one of, and I'm happy that it's coming to the game. Next up, we have Sky Striker Mech Armory Hercules Base. Activate this card only if you control no monsters in your main monster zone. The equipped monster cannot attack directly. It can make a second attack on monsters during each battle phase. If the equipped monster destroys a monster by its attack while you have three or more spells in your graveyard, draw a card. And if this card is sent to the field, the graveyard, by a card effect, you can, you can target up to three Sky Striker cards in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck. All these effects are bad, don't play this card. Okay, we're almost done with the cards that we are getting. Sorry, it's taking a minute. This is a big archetype. Sky Striker Airspace Area Zero. This is a field spell. You can target one other card you control, excavate the top three cards of your deck, and if you do, you can add one Sky Striker card to your hand, also shuffle the rest into your deck. Then, if you did excavate a Sky Striker card, send the targeted card that the targeted you controlled to the graveyard. If this card in the field zone is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon one Sky Striker Ace Monster from your deck. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, you will activate multi roll and you will use multi roll to send your area zero to the graveyard so that you can make sure that your spell cards are not interrupted. 
Once you've done that, multi rolls effect will trigger and you get Ray from your deck without needing to special summon her or normal summon her or draw her. It's really good because you only have three copies of Ray, so you can't play without Ray. This is a great way to make sure that you have Ray for right now. A multi roll is uh, once per turn, you can target one other card you control, send that card to the graveyard. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to your spell card activations for the rest of the turn. And once per turn during the end phase, you can set Scott Striker spells with different names from your graveyard. Up to the number of Scott Striker spell cards you activate this turn, while this card was faced upon the field, but banish someone lately at the field. You can use this to set your field spell. So, this is another reason why people are saying Sky Striker is probably not going to be that good in Duel Links because Multi Roll is a very important card for them, but you only have two spell zones in addition to Multi Roll. So, Multi Roll can only set up to two cards to your spell zone along with the field spell. That makes Multi Roll significantly worse, but I don't think it's going to end the game. I do think that. Widow Anchor is your primary concern, so as long as you can get your Widow Anchor back along with maybe your Eagle Brewster or your Shark Cannon, you'll be fine. Speaking of Widow Anchor, this is the Limit 2 bundle. Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor, it's a quick play spell. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target one face-up effect monster on the field, negate that monster's effects until the end of the turn. Then if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard, you can take control of that monster until the end phase. Okay. That's really good. So this card is basically Effect Failure, just like the other card was basically DD Crow. But it also allows you to potentially take control of the opponent's monster. How good is that? That's really, really good. It could potentially get you lethal. So absolutely, this is a card you're going to play two of. You'll be happy to have it at two, and you will set it with multi-roll to make sure that you can use it multiple times. Nothing else to say there. Then for the cards in the box, the last card we need to talk about is Sky Striker Maneuver Afterburners. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target one face-up monster on the field, destroy it. Then if you have three or more spells in your graveyard, you can destroy one spell or trap on the field without targeting. So, Afterburners is an interesting option. You could play Dark Hole or you could play this card. Dark Hole is probably the better card for making sure you don't die. But Afterburners has synergy with Multi-Roll, which is the big question. Like, is... The ability to repeat Afterburners worth it over playing Dark Hole, which has a wider effect immediately. It's going to depend on the meta, really. Because it's not that good to blow up your opponent's entire field if they can just respond by building that board back up over the next turn. So when you're dealing with decks like Mayakashi and Shiranui, getting rid of your opponent's board is not necessarily going to win you the game. And remember, Dark Hole is played primarily by decks that can actually OTK. Sky Striker cannot OTK. That's the important thing you guys need to understand. Sky Striker is not a deck where if you go second, you are going to win on that turn. You need Axis Code Talker for that. We don't have Axis Code Talker. So instead, you're probably going to be trying to poke your opponent for a little bit and wait for next turn so that you can set up lethal. So it's a two turn deck. We haven't had too many two turn decks in Duel Links. So it's going to be an adjustment for a lot of people. That's why Afterburners might actually be better than Dark Hole. We'll have to see. Then the last card that we are getting, not in the box, but in the skill, is Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. This card is dumb. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, add one Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand, except Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. Then if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard, you can draw one card. So this draws you Ray. And then if you have three spell cards in your graveyard, it also draws you a card. Is that good? Yes, that's extremely good. So you can get this card at two through the skill, and you need the skill anyway to give you Kagari and Kaina and Hayate, so be happy that you have this card and move on with your life. Okay, those are the cards that are coming to the game. Now let's talk about the cards that could come to the game. So we have Sky Striker Ace Zeke. This is a Link 2 with 1500 attack points, which requires two monsters, including a Sky Striker Ace monster. Must be Link Summoned. You can only special summon Zeke once per turn. If this card is linked, summon you can target one face-up monster on the field, banish it until your opponent's next end phase. Once per turn, you can target one other card you control. This card gains 1,000 attack points, then send the targeted card to the graveyard. So, Zeke is a very good card. It allows you to basically use your opponent's monster as link material. So, this is how you primarily remove monsters. You will summon a monster like Kagari and then you play Widow Anchor, you take control of one of your opponent's monsters, and then you link Kagari and the Widow Anchor target into Zeke. And then Zeke banishes another monster your opponent controls, gains a thousand attack points, and attacks your opponent directly. 
That's kind of the Sky Striker game plan. It's a game plan that would work in Duel Links if we had Zeke, but we don't. So when Zeke comes, it's going to completely change the way that Sky Strikers play. Sky Strikers will be more likely to be able to OTK, and that's very important. So I think that Sky Strikers definitely need Zeke, and they might not hit the tier list without him, but we'll see what happens once we get him. Another important card for Sky Strikers is Hornet Drones. Sky Striker Mecha Hornet Drones. This is a quick play spell. It is limited in Master Duel, it is limited in the TCG, and it is limited in the OCG. And I'm sorry, I usually do a lot of research for these videos. I have no idea why this card is limited. <laughs> um, I guess it's because it's not once per turn, which is kind of weird. I would expect a card like this to be once per turn, but it's not. You control no monsters in your main monster zone, special summon an ace token which cannot be attributed, and if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard when the effect resolves, the token's attack and defense become 1500 instead, which is not useful because it's in defense position. So this is basically just another way to play Ray. You know, you need a Sky Striker Ace Monster so you can use it as link material. The idea is that you play this card, then you can immediately link it off, and for some reason that is seen as a problem by the community, so they limited it to it. Do I think this card is going to come to Duel Links? Probably not. A token being a special summoned it is a much bigger deal in Duel Links than it is in the main game. And we haven't even gotten Rose yet, so they really are hesitant to give us easy access to the extra deck. So I don't imagine this card is going to come anytime soon, if at all. Speaking of Rose, there is another Sky Striker Ace Monster, which is Sky Striker Ace Rose, which is a warrior. If a Sky Striker Ace Monster is normal or special summoned, except Rose, you can special summon this card from your hand. Right, so that includes both your Link Monsters as well as Ray. And it triggers off of a normal or special summon. So you can summon this card during your opponent's turn if right pops onto the field. Or you can summon it during your turn if you normal summon Ray. If an opponent's monster in the extra monster zone is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of your card effect while this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon this card, then you can negate the effects of one face-up monster your opponent controls until the end of the turn. You can only use each effect of Rose once per turn. I mean, being able to negate a card is really, really good, and special summoning from the graveyard, also really, really good. So Rose is a great card. Rose will see a lot of play when she comes out. I don't imagine they'll wait long to give us Rose because I think that Sky Strikers will probably be bad. They can only coast off of Sky Strikers' popularity for so long. They will want to capitalize on it. So they're going to slow drip it because they can make money off of that, but they can't slow drip it enough that Sky Strikers don't see any play at all, just like they did with Heroes. Heroes is a deck that they slow dripped, but they also gave them a ton of support through skills and characters. They're going to give us Rose sooner rather than later so that we can play the game. Especially because there'll be a lot of dissatisfaction with Scotch Striker players. They're going to play the game, they're going to say that they don't have Ray, and they're going to say, but I can't even do anything. Like, I can't, I can't play the game because I don't have any monsters. So, they're not going to give us Hornet Drones, they're not going to give us Linkage, they need to give us Rose so that we have more consistent starters. They gave us two Live Twins to start with, they should give us two Scotch Strikers to start with, so we'll see how this goes. Linkage is another card I need to talk about. Sky Striker Mobilize Linkage, if you control no monsters in your main monster zone, you can not special summon for the extra deck for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, except it's Sky Striker Ace Monsters. Also, send one other card you control to the graveyard. If you do, special summon one Sky Striker Ace Monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, and if you have at least one light and one dark Sky Striker Ace Monster on your field and or in your graveyard, the summon monster gains 1,000 attack points permanently. So, Linkage is just a way to summon, like, Kagari or... Shizuku without Ray. Again, it's, it's another way to play the game. You can send a monster you control to the graveyard. Like, for example, if you make Axis Code Talker, you can then send the Axis Code Talker to play Linkage in the, in the battle phase and then attack directly again. So it's a great follow-up card. It's a card that allows you to special summon during your opponent's turn if you want to. It does cost you a card from your field, but it's a really, really good effect, so it doesn't really matter. And you could even get a benefit out of it if you send your Area Zero, so... This is just a fantastic card, and it's probably never coming into Duel Links. This is just way too much of a swing on the board for how Duel Links operates. I don't imagine this card's going to come at all. Now for the other Sky Striker monsters, we have Surgical Striker HAMP. This monster has 2500 attack and 2500 defense. If you control a Sky Striker Ace monster, you can special summon this card from your hand to either field by tributing one monster from that field. You can only special summon a hamp once per turn this way. When this card is destroyed by battle, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. 
So Hamp is a really interesting card. It allows you to get rid of one of your opponent's threats, summon it to the field, and then if you are able to destroy it in battle, and it has 2,500 defense points, that's actually really hard for Sky Strikers to beat over. If you are able to beat over this card, then its effect from the graveyard will trigger and allow you to pop another card. So really, really good. And the fact that the skill says that you can't summon any monsters except Sky Striker monsters is an indication to me that we are going to get Hamp pretty quickly. Because Sky Strikers are kind of a deck that lives and dies off of not being negated. And to restrict them from being able to play Kaijus is very weird on Konami's part, in my opinion. So if they're not going to let Sky Strikers play Kaijus, then I do think that they're going to give them their own Kaiju fairly soon. So this is a card that I'm pretty confident is going to come to Duel Links within this year. Next up we have Aileron. Aileron is a level 1 wind monster. And it is always treated as a Sky Striker card. Now for those of you that don't know the lore of Sky Strikers, the idea is basically that Ray and Rose are the only two humans left on the planet after the machines wiped everything out. And they are both caught up on opposite sides of a war between the remaining machine factions. So that's why every Sky Striker monster other than Ray and Rose is a machine, even though most of them look fairly humanoid. A Sky Striker Ace monster equipped with this card gains 400 attack points. You can only use one of the following effects of Aileron per turn and only once that turn. During the main phase as a quick effect, you can target one Sky Striker Ace monster you control, equip this card from your hand or your field to it. If this card on the field is destroyed, you can send one Sky Striker spell from your deck to the graveyard. Okay, so Aileron is a quick play equip that allows you to, if you wait a turn, mill a card. And it gives your monster 400 attack points, which isn't nothing. In particular, this could allow you to beat over Hamp with Zeke. So, Zeke has 2500 attack points, Hamp has 2500 defense points. You could then use Aileron on Zeke to make sure that Zeke can actually beat over Hamp, which will allow you to get Hamp off the field, so that it's not a threat to you, as well as popping a card in your punk controls. So Aileron is an important card for Sky Strikers. However, I don't think it's a card that we'll see play in a 20 card format. So they will probably give us this card just because they know that it's not good. And that's fine. The other Sky Striker spells that we could get is Scissor Cross, which is if you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target a level four Sky Striker Ace monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Or if you have three or more spells in your graveyard, you can special summon it instead. I think getting Ray back is pretty important, so I imagine this card will probably come next year. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, would you play this card? Uh, you might play it at one. And Sky Striker Maneuver Vector Blast. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, each player sends the top two cards of their deck to the graveyard. If you sent at least one card to the graveyard and you have three or more spells in your graveyard, you can shuffle all monsters from the extra monster zone into your opponent's deck. So, that's an interesting idea. It allows you to very easily get three spells in your graveyard for all of your other effects. You start with Engage, and then you play Vector Blast, and you happen to mill two spells. Okay, Vector Blast's second effect is now live, as well as the second effect of every other Sky Striker spell you play. Is that good? It's not good enough. So Vector Blast is good in theory, but it does not see any play, and it's probably not going to see any play even in Duel Links. Yes, shuffling a monster from your extra monster zone into the deck is good, but it's not good enough to justify it not being better, right? This is a card that it's not a quick play spell. You can't play it during your opponent's turn if you go first, so it's a pretty dead option. Yes, you can still play it if your opponent doesn't have a monster, but do you want to? Probably not. So, moving on. Later cards that we could get, probably not for several years. Sky Striker Ace Azalea. This is a Link 2. It requires two light and or dark monsters. Must be Link Summon. You can only special summon it once per turn. If this card is special summon, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Then if you have three or less spell cards in your graveyard, send this card to the graveyard. So, in order for you to use Azalea, you do have to have lots of spells in your graveyard. It's interesting that instead of a bonus for having multiple spells in your graveyard, this card just has a straight drawback if you don't. I like that. And Azalea is a pretty good card. Once per turn, at the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish one spell from your graveyard and destroy that opponent's monster. Fantastic. So, using spells as a resource is pretty cool. It makes it more difficult for you to keep up with that whole three spells in your graveyard, but it, there's a huge benefit for doing so, so it's a great option. And Sky Strikers have been missing the ability to actually win fights, so this is a good card. The fact that it's once per turn is fair, so your opponents can 
they have to give up a monster to basically crash into your Azalea, which helps you survive. But it also seems pretty fair to your opponent. So I like the card. I think that it should come to Duel Links at some point, but it's going to take a long time. We don't even have Rose yet. The other Sky Striker monsters, we have Sage of Benevolence, Ciela. Level 6 machine. You can discard one spell to special summon this card from your hand. You can banish one spell from your graveyard. Give control of this card to your opponent, and if you do, special summon one Sky Striker Ace monster from your graveyard. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished Sky Striker spells, add it to your hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. Okay, so Ciela lets you get a spell card in your graveyard, which is useful to you. Then you can banish a specific spell from your graveyard to get Ray back. And if you do, then you can crash into Ciela. You can put her in defense and then give her to your opponent. And then she will give you the spell that you banished back as a resource. So it's basically like Kagari. That's, that's pretty good. And this card does not need to special summon just Ray. She could bring back a Link monster that is a Sky Shark Race, as long as it's not Zeke. So this is a really good card. And Ciela is very important to the Sky Shark story. If we get like a world next year where that's focused on, you know, monster stories, then I do think that Ciela will probably be a character in that world. And I do think that her card will be part of that. So I imagine that if Konami is planning to make the 2025 world a monster spirit world, Ciela will come as part of the September unlock. That's what I'm thinking. Sage of Strength Akash, level 5 Fire Machine, 2400 attack points. You can discard one spell, special summon this card from your hand. If a Link monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish one spell from your graveyard instead. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished Sky Striker spells and add it to your hand. Okay. So Akash protects Ray and then gives you a card after she's destroyed. That's great. Akash, again, is a very important character in the story. So I imagine that this card will come at some point. It's not as powerful as Ciela, so probably sooner rather than later, and I look forward to seeing it. Um, would you play this card? It depends on how many spells you're playing in the deck. Ciela, absolutely. No question you would play Ciela. But Akash is uh, a little bit more of a question, because her effect, while it's very good, and her body also very good, it's just a question of, you know, can you afford to discard a spell to play her? You could definitely discard a spell to play Ciela, but I don't know that you could justify it for Akash. Next up we have Sage of Wisdom Himmel, also level 5, 2500 defense points. You can discard a spell, special summon this card from your hand. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a Link monster you control, you can banish two spells from your graveyard and negate that effect. If this card is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can target one of your banished spells and add it to your hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. Okay, so Himmel is your protection. Akash protects from battle, and Himmel protects from targeting, and Himmel costs twice as much. I don't see this card being added to your deck. I do see it coming to Duel Links, but I don't see it being added to your deck. It's probably a pretty hard card to justify. Then we have... Uh, I'll talk about this card real quick. Pillar of the Future is Cianos. This card is... Very, very new. Level 1 Light Machine. You can discard one spell, special summon this card from your hand. If this card is normal, special summon, you can special summon Rose from your deck or graveyard. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of your deck for the rest of the turn except machines. You can banish this card from your graveyard, take one of your Scotch Record Ace Rose that is banished or in your graveyard, and either add it to your hand or special summon it. So, Cianos is entirely focused on Rose, and there's story reasons for that. But this card is just like brand new. I think this card came out this year, so I don't imagine this card's going to come to Duel Links anytime soon, so by the time you've forgotten about this video, it might be in the game. Would you play this card? 100%. Okay. Other Link monsters. We have Surgical Striker Spectra. Link 4. It requires at least two monsters, including a Link monster. Must first be Link summoned. Loses 3,000 attack points while you have zero spells in your graveyard. Okay. That's interesting. I don't think you're ever going to be in a position where you have zero spells in your graveyard as a Sky Striker, so it's a very serious drawback, but it's one that you can pretty easily manage. Where your opponent activates a card or effect as a chain link 2 or higher, you can banish two spell cards from your hand and or graveyard, negate that effect, then you can destroy one card your opponent controls. You can only use this effect once per turn. So there you go, you know, you have to be careful. 
If you banish two spells from your graveyard, you could stop a very important card your opponent's activating, but you could also drop your Spectra's attack points to zero. So you have to make sure that you're actually not getting down to zero spells. Uh, really cool card, I really like it. And you could kind of like bait and switch as well. If you get your monster's attack points down to zero by banishing like every spell in your graveyard, then your opponent attacks Spectra. You can respond by activating a card like Widow Anchor. And then when Widow Anchor resolves, it goes to your graveyard. The battle happens, Spectra now has 3,000 attack points. So that's an interesting option. You play a spell card that's a quick life spell that doesn't cause a replay of battle. And then your opponent is you know, messed up. So this is a card that I definitely want to see in the game at some point. Again, it's very new. Probably not coming for a while, but I like it as the future of Sky Strikers. You know, this is a card that convinces me to invest in Sky Strikers because this is a card I absolutely could see being added to Duel Links and dominating Duel Links. Then we have Sky Striker Ace Azalea Temperance. Requires at least two monsters, including a Link monster, a Link three with 2,500 attack points. Must first be Link Summon. If this card is special summon, you can banish one spell from your hand or graveyard, then target one monster your opponent controls with 2,500 or less attack. Equip that face-up monster to this card as an equip spell. Wow, that's insane. <laughs> okay, so it does require that you target the monster, but as long as you can target the monster and it has 2,500 or less attack, it's yours now. It's an equip spell. Your opponent can't use the graveyard effect. They can't use any sort of monster effect with it. It's just it's just a dead card. So this is a very effective form of removal. And yeah, no, this <laughs> I like this card a lot. When this card is destroyed by battle, you can special summon one other Sky Striker monster from your hand or graveyard. Sweet. That's really good recursion, and it will trigger Ray as well. So you know you're going to bring back Ray and potentially Rose. You know this is this is a really strong card, brand new, probably not coming for a couple of years. But um, I hope that this card does come because it's the kind of ace monster. You know it's a Link Three, so it's not as powerful as Spectre, but it's in that line of power that's acceptable for dual links. This is the sort of card that Sky Strikers need to be like a competitive deck. So I really hope this card comes at some point. Combination Maneuver Engage Zero. Uh, link 2 requires two light and or dark monsters. Cannot be used as light material. If this card is special summon, you can target one monster on the field with 2500 or more attack. They get its effects until the end of the turn. At the start of the damage step, if this card attacks and you have Sky Striker Ace Ray and Sky Striker Ace Rose in your graveyard, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. You can only special summon Combination Maneuver Engage Zero once per turn. So, you have to attack. So it's your turn only. But if you use Ray and Rose as material, your opponent doesn't banish them from your graveyard, you can then attack into your opponent's monster and blow everything up. Is that good? Yes, that's very good. That's kind of like one of the main things that Sky Strikers are missing is mass removal. This card gives them a mass removal. Again, it's a brand new card, probably not coming for several years, but this is the card that you are looking for. Hopefully our extra decks is like 12 cards at that point. You will play this card 100%, probably at one, but it will be the one card that you really need for certain situations. I love this card. And the last card that we can talk about is Sky Striker Ace Camellia, which is a Link 2 that requires two effect monsters. It must first be Link Summon. You can only special summon Camellia once per turn. So this is the only monster that does not require a Sky Striker Ace monster or a Link monster. You can make this with the actual Sky Striker monsters as opposed to the Sky Striker Ace monsters. So if a card like Sage of Wisdom Himmel is going to see any play at all, it will probably be because Camellia is worth playing. Let's see if Camellia is worth playing. Once per turn, if you have three or less spell cards in your graveyard, you can send one Sky Striker card from your deck to the graveyard. Not a spell, a card. Okay, that's pretty good. You can mill Rose. And if you mill Rose, then Rose is live. That's really strong. <laughs> that's really strong. Getting Rose in your graveyard, 100%, that's a really good card. So, okay, yeah. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one monster your opponent controls. Special summon this card to their field. If you do, send that monster to the graveyard. Also, shift control to this card's owner during the end phase of this turn. Wow, that's a really good effect. So you link this off, because it's, it's, if this card is set to the graveyard, you can link this off, target one monster your opponent controls, summon Camellia back to your opponent's side of the field, and then send that monster to the graveyard, and then you just get Camellia back during the end phase. And then you can do it again. Well, no, okay, hold on. You can only special summon Camellia once per turn, so okay. If you link summon Camellia, then you can't use its effect the same turn, because you can't special summon it more than once. So you have to link summon Camellia and then wait a turn to use this effect. Okay, that makes it a little bit worse, but still, it's a really good effect. Yeah, this card would probably come to Duel Links, not anytime soon. Would it see play? It depends on how much you want to play the other Sky Striker cards. Uh, if you're playing the other Sky Striker cards, you are 100% playing this card as a way to get them in the graveyard. But 
if you're not playing the other Sky Striker cards, it's not nearly as important. I guess it depends on whether we get Foolish Burial, right? Because if we get Foolish Burial, then Camellia's effect is not nearly as relevant. But if we don't get Foolish Burial, then Camellia is a Foolish Burial. And a Foolish Burial is really good. So, yeah... I'm less sure about this one. All right, well, that is the Sky Striker archetype. That is what you can expect from this deck moving forward. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. My name is Serafi, and I was thrilled to have all of you with me.